cedar plank salmon. Dynamite. We're gonna start with a little jalapeno. Jalapeno and some garlic to get this spicy apricot chili glaze going. So the jalapenos normally when I'm, I'm doing them on Guy's Big Bite is I'm taking them and taking the ribs and the seeds out. That's where all the heat is. These I'm actually gonna cut in rounds because I want a little bit more heat. So I'm gonna leave the ribs and the seeds in. Okay. Now, if you didn't have a jalapeno available, a little red chili flake would work good, but jalapeno really is meant to go into this one. Okay. Now, my pan is nice and warm. I've also preheated my oven with the broiler because I'm going to be popping some peppers in there to let those kind of char up so I can take the skins off them. Okay. A little extra virgin olive oil. Saute pan, not too hot because I want these to caramelize a little bit. I want some of the heat, but I also want them to mellow out just a bit. Got to hear a little sizzle when it goes in or you're definitely not hot enough. Okay, that's down, a couple cloves of garlic. Now the same thing with the garlic. Normally you'll see me mince it or put it in a press uh, or dice it up real fine. This here I'm going to kind of do just in some real nice thin slices and these will survive a little bit better in this pan. You know a lot of times when you see garlic browning up you're knowing that it's becoming bitter. These are going to actually cook right about the same tempo that those jalapenos are. Okay, and those go in. Next one. Give it a little toss, get that oil moved all around. We're gonna add in a little whole grain mustard and we're gonna do the apricot preserves. What if you don't have apricot preserves? Orange marmalade would work good. A Little bit different flavor, but it's that same idea where you're gonna be bringing a fruit into it, a sweet fruit. We're gonna have a little bit of the acid um, from the mustard coming in, and then we got a little bit of the heat from the jalapeno. So you can kind of mix this up the way you want. I'm gonna deglaze it with a little bit of white wine. Whoa, nice catch, you see that? Well, kind of nice catch. All right, so we deglaze it with a little white wine. This also works great on game, like if you're doing some pheasant, um, if you want to do some pork chops, oh, dynamite on pork chops. Center cut, bone in. Okay, and we'll crank this up now really high because the alcohol is gonna protect that so these now won't burn, and we hit it with a little bit of the whole grain. Dijon mustard works good too. You could even go yellow mustard if that's all you got. One, two, three tablespoons. All right, apricot preserves. Again, when it comes to something like this, like the apricot preserves, using the better quality works good because everything that you put into this is gonna come out in the flavor. And a lot of times people say with wine also, well, you know, ah, the wine's not that great, save it, we'll cook with it. Don't cook with anything that you're not gonna drink and don't put it in the dish, okay? Okay, so now we've got the spicy. Now we've got a little bit of the sour from the mustard. Now here comes the sweet. So about a three quarters to a cup of that of the apricot preserves. Excellent. Get a little spoon. Roll my corn. See how the corn's starting to brown up? That's just what we're looking for. We're just gonna try to get it done evenly around there. So I've got this working together. These flavors are gonna marry. This is gonna reduce, gonna make a really nice glaze that we're gonna go and put on our salmon that's gonna go on the cedar plank that's gonna go in the oven. Now I need to get the cedar planks down. Now, cedar planks, why? Well. The smell of them kind of smells like a closet or like a cigar humidor. And what ends up happening with this is some people soak them in, in water and uh, then throw them in the oven and they almost steam a little bit and impart some flavor. Me, I like to go a little bit more uh, big bite style. And I actually don't soak them in the water. I just throw them right on the fire. So I've got them down on the fire, crank up the heat. And I'm almost going to let them burn. Now, this would be something you'd probably be a little more interested in doing outside on your barbecue. Uh, but you really have to pay caution because this almost might get, uh, you know, glowing embers on the bottom. Bottom, which will create smoke when we put it in the oven. So no kids doing this, really do this with some caution. Okay, and you can see they're already starting to smoke now. Okay, let's look at the salmon. Beautiful fillets. Um, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is we could use a big piece of salmon. I like to use them in the little steak cuts if I can of the filet because I want this, this glaze to get everywhere around the salmon when it cooks in the oven. So these are looking pretty perfect. Look at this, what's going on here? See how they're starting to smoke up? Perfect, just where I want them. This is definitely the time to make sure that you don't have the uh, smoke alarm going off. Okay, look at that. Little bit of smoke going on right there. And that's not too much because we don't want it to change the whole flavor of the house. Throw that one down. That one got a little bit extra. Okay, so those goes down right there. And then we'll throw the parchment paper on there. Parchment paper is gonna curl up in just a second. Unless I get these salmon, salmon steaks down, these fillets. Okay. Don't put them too close together. See, I knew it was gonna curl up on me. Don't put them too close together because uh, we don't want them to be steaming each other. 
give them a little separation. I could probably fit three fillets on here with this size. And also I took the uh, planks off of the fire because see how that parchment paper, it could actually catch on fire. So we don't really want that to happen. Those go down, that goes down. Let me hit it with a little salt, a little pepper. Right on top, oh, those look beautiful. And uh, cooking with cedar really adds some nice flavor. You really have to watch out though. You can't just take any cedar that you find. Usually going to a barbecue store or online to a specialty food store is where you can find these planks. There, those go down. There we go. Gives a nice sweet earthy flavor to it. Okay, now here that glaze is cooled down so it's not gonna run off of the salmon. If I put it on there hot, it might have a tendency to just kind of cruise right off of there. Down. A little bit more, be liberal with it. I'll show you a little trick of why this is not gonna wreck your oven when, if it does start to run off of the salmon. Okay, excellent. Turn that bad boy off. Now these planks shouldn't be so hot that I can't touch them, They're gonna be all right. Into the oven at 350 degrees, pop these on top. There we go, 350 degrees for about 15 minutes, should be fine. Take the pan that we had, Flip it upside down in case any of that glaze starts to run off. Okay, there we go. Now it's been down three, about 350 on cedar planks. Wow, look at those. How hot, yeah, they're hot. I'm gonna pop those down on top of this. And I put that tray, I put this cookie sheet underneath it because in case that apricot chili glaze started to come off of there, I didn't want that to drip all over my oven, but look at that and smell it, the rosemary's coming out, the little bit of the jalapeno. Now I put it on the parchment paper, so what'll be nice is that it didn't stick to the wood and I might be able to use the wood again. Oh, look at that. Mmm. Excellent flavor.